Hello, welcome to Getting Started with Your Clever Touch panel. In this video, we're going to cover the things that you need to know to get started right away with your new Clever Touch panel. First things first, in order to turn on the panel, you'll select this button on the front of the panel. It is red. When you select it, it should turn white and the board will turn on. Your board will open to the Lux home screen. It will look like this. On each side of the home screen, there's a carrot that opens the same menu. From the bottom of the board, there's a carrot that opens the inputs, adjusts the volume, and the brightness. Your inputs are located either on the front of your panel or right behind the screen on the side. You can see which inputs are connected by this blue circle. You can see which input you're using by this blue dot. The next place we're gonna go is the apps. When we select apps, we're gonna go into the settings to make some adjustments so your board is ready to go. First things first, we're gonna select Wi-Fi right at the top. To make sure that your board has connected to the strongest Wi-Fi nearest you, you can select which Wi-Fi you want it to be connected to. I'm gonna use the back arrow to back out of there because my board is already connected in a way that I want it to. If you are connecting with an ethernet, you'd go through the same process. Scrolling down, I'm gonna select languages and inputs which lives right here under personal. Languages and inputs are where I can select English United States. Your board might come preset English United Kingdom. You are gonna make the correction, select United States. Again, hitting the back arrow in the upper left-hand corner, I back myself out. And the next place that I'm gonna go is display. So going back up under device to display. When I select display, I have an opportunity to change the wallpaper. There are live wallpapers and still wallpapers. For this demo, we're just gonna select a still wallpaper. These are all of the options that I have that come preset with the board. Select this. Once I've made my choice up in the upper left-hand corner, I select set wallpaper and my wallpaper is now corrected. Using the back arrow, I back out, back out again. Now that we've done our display, we're gonna go down further to system and select date and time. The date and time format might be selected year, month, date, you might want to change that format. So I can choose date format and change it to month, day, year. I can also select my time zone. So by scrolling through this menu, I know that I live in central daylight time, I'm gonna set that. I can also choose the color in which that shows up on my home screen. After I changed my home screen to be the green grass, that blue might not show up as well. So I can select from these colors. I have a preview pane here, so I know that that looks great. And now my home screen is set that way. Using the back arrow, I'm gonna back out of there. The floating pencil gives me all of the navigation tools that I need. So when I select my floating pencil, I can go right back to the home screen by selecting the house. From here, I can see the changes that I made. You can change the title of your board by tapping five times. One, two, three, four, five. And an edit screen shows up for you to make a change. When you're done, you would hit this check mark and your board would have its own unique name. We're gonna go into the whiteboard When you open your whiteboard, it will look like this. 
You have on the bottom left, a three line menu. That's a file menu. From here, you can change the background of your board. When I touch background, I get opportunities for different colors, textures, and customizations. As you go further in using your board and you save images to your board, this file will grow. For this demo, I'm going to change the color to black so that you can see it. Once I've made that selection, I hit OK. And now we're going to use the tools across the middle and work on our board. The second tool is a pen tool. When I click on it, I can see that I have two choices for ink. The first one is the fat side of your stylus. So I can change the width of it to match my stylus. And I've selected white because we're using a black board. The second side, I've selected yellow and made it a little thinner because that matches my, my stylus. Immediately, I can start writing on my board. And I can switch sides with my stylus and get different colors of ink. The next tool that we're going to focus on is the A with the underline, which is a text tool. I created this slide using the text tool. When the text tool is selected, all I have to do is write a word. And the board will ask, is this the word that you meant? I say yes by selecting that down arrow and the word slaps into a text. To size it, I'm then going to select my selector tool, this arrow. When I tap on it, you can see that it becomes a movable text box. Make it larger, I can move it around and then I do have four colors that I can adapt it to if I want. Once I tap off of it, it's there on the board. The next tool we're going to talk about is the math tool. The math tool will take your handwriting, much like the text tool then, and snap it into a typeface. If you have one question mark, involved in your problem and you tap on it, the board will solve it. The board will write really difficult equations, but it will only solve for one variable and that variable needs to be a question mark. Again, what that looks like is this. Again, it's asking, is this what you meant? I say yes by hitting that down arrow and it snaps it into that font, but it's small. So I'm gonna do the selector tool, tap on it again, make it bigger, and I might turn it into a black typeface because it's easier to see. And I tap off of it, go back to the math tool and hit that, I get that answer. The next tool is an eraser. I can use my hand as an eraser if my pen tool is selected. And it will erase things I've written, but it will not erase things that I have snapped into a text or into math. The board sees those as images. So I'm gonna need to use this eraser to erase those things. When I have the eraser selected, you'll see this red dotted line. As it crosses things, it will erase them. If I've made a mistake, and I wish that I hadn't erased something, I can hit this back arrow <laughs> and I can get it back. The next tool we're gonna cover is the shapes tool. Using this tool here, you can create a diagram or you can have students use these shapes for math class. Once I select it, I have choices of 2D shapes and also 3D shapes. For this demo, we'll stay here in these 2D shapes. I'm gonna select a color that I am sure will show up. So I'm gonna select, I think I'll do the yellow. I'm gonna tap on a square. In order to draw the square, I simply put my finger or stylus on the board 
and drag it until that shape is the size I want it to be. If I'm happy with the location, once I let go of it, it's good to go. If I wanna move it, I can hit this arrow, tap on it, and now I have some more editable opportunities with it. Sizing and color. The last tool on this menu that we're gonna talk about is the hand tool. This is an infinite whiteboard space. So when this is selected, I can minimize this and move it off the panel and continue to take notes. I can pull it back. I can send it this direction. If I want to figure out where I am in my infinite whiteboard space, I select that hand tool again and I have a map. I can zoom in, snap it back, and move it back to the way that I had it before. You may have seen me hitting these buttons. If I want to add a whiteboard, I simply hit the plus. This gives me another page in my whiteboard slide deck. Again, I can change the color. If I wanna see all of the slides in my slide deck, I can tap on these numbers right here and I can see all of the slides. In order to get back to my home screen, I'm gonna access my floating pencil and I'm gonna go home. From here, I'm gonna tap on the browser, which will take me to the browser that exists on the board. From here, you can type in things you'd like to search. You could type in a known website that you're looking for. On the board, when you open the floating toolbar, these are the opportunities that you have. These are the functions of the tool, which is the wrench. And then this is the annotation toolbar that opens as you are working on a web browser. There's much more information on all of these in our other videos. For any other additional support, please email us at pd at bloom.com. Thank you.